Hey everybody, my name is Monsel, and today we're gonna talk about invasive species. And invasive species are generally considered animals, plants, fungi that are foreign to an environment, an environment that cannot handle their presence. They're often not native to an environment and they are often introduced by humans. An example of this are the axis deer or chital in Hindi, which are Indian deer traditionally that have been introduced to Hawaii. The islands of Molokai, Lanai, Maui all have huge populations of axis deer and these deer have no natural predators so they have blown up in their population and they typically forage and eat plants that haven't had the defenses to handle these deer and therefore it is destroying the ecosystem of many of the Hawaiian islands. Now one of the reasons I love hunting invasive species is because it's one of the most ethical ways of hunting. We are essentially using hunting as a conservation tool. We are taking these animals off a landscape where they either don't belong or it's better for us to bring down their population. Now I want to preface the rest of this video by saying at the end I'm going to share with you a potentially controversial way of approaching the hunt of invasive species. But for now, let's look at where you can do this. There are many different types of invasive species across the United States, most of which are edible in some form. I'm going to focus specifically on the edible forms and I won't cover all of them, but this will give you a good sense of where you can go to get some nutritious meat that is sustainable and useful for conservation purposes. In my home state of Texas, there are numerous opportunities for what are considered invasive species. Wild hogs uh, are in abundance here. There are axis deer, and there's a giant uh, elk-like antelope called a nilgai. There's about 20,000 free-ranging nilgai in the southern coastal plains of Texas. All of these animals provide a ton of meat for you if you wanted to hunt invasive species in Texas. Number two, in the southern USA, there are tons of wild hogs. So you can see from this map, California, but also Texas, Louisiana, all over the southern United States, there are wild hog opportunities. Any of these states uh, would be happy to have you come hunt these animals because oftentimes they do damage to the agricultural crops of the area. Number three is Florida, where there are tropical species. You can find iguanas, which are considered to be a delicacy, almost like chicken. You can find pythons that are a little bit harder to find, but still super tasty. Both of these are tropical animals that have been introduced, and now you can eat them. So both the iguana and the python are tropical species that were introduced to Florida, and now they have gone a little bit crazy with their population. So going to hunt them, it's a nutritious food source and it helps conservation and ecology in the area. Number four is Hawaii. And in Hawaii, you can hunt the axis deer, which I talked about in the example earlier, but there's also wild sheep, wild goats, and wild hogs. All of these animals were introduced by humans, whether it were, was Polynesians hundreds of years ago or uh, Anglos and uh, more modern humans in the last hundred years. Whatever the case is, all of these four areas are looking for conservation help from hunters like you. How can you hunt invasive species? Well, it's important to note here that any species considered invasive is generally hunted year round. They are targeted by hunters and that makes them a little bit more savvy than other species. Oftentimes they can go nocturnal and they can be a lot more adept at avoiding hunters. So you're going to oftentimes, unless you're a really good hunter, need some type of local guide to help you. And every situation is different. In Hawaii, you might do some spot and stalk and ambush hunting, whereas in parts of Texas, you have to you know, hunt from a blind if you wanna hunt pigs, uh, because spot and stock can be very challenging. So it will really depend where you are. But I do have a closing perspective for you. 
by hunting these animals, we are providing a service to the environment by killing them and removing them from the landscape. But I think it is important to remember one thing. We introduced these animals. Sometimes it was by humans very long ago, sometimes by more modern humans, but the point is these animals are not doing anything that they were not meant to do naturally. And it is our responsibility. We have to remember that we brought them here. And yes, that means that is our job to uh, kill them, remove them from the population. But I do believe it's also our responsibility to speak about them in a way that is respectful and honoring of these animals instead of disrespecting them. Now, I live in Texas, and this is where I spend most of my time, and I notice that there is a higher propensity to consider wild hogs, for example, invasive, and therefore use that as a justification for uh, being less ethical, for uh, speaking about them in discriminatory ways, and also, maybe worse, is the fact that people are willing to let them suffer because they don't like the hogs. And this is the crux of my work, is to treat all life as sacred, even the life we consider invasive. If you look at the root word of invasive, it's the same as invade. And these animals didn't really invade anything. We brought them and then they proliferated in an environment that they were not meant to live. It is really important when we are relating to hunting, when we're re relating to the land, that the words we use, the words we speak, are in alignment with our approach. And this is a far more ethical, far more sacred way to approach these animals. I like to consider something like the pig a non-native species rather than using the word invasive. And this subtle change in the words gives me a, a better appreciation for these animals and avoids me taking advantage of them. If we use words that are aligned with love and respect, it's going to provide us with more love and respect on the hunt. And I know as an ethical hunter, that's what we all want.